Hello, people on the internet. It's your favorite garage dwelling Sarah here with another Gump review. And today I have a 2021 Subaru Forester Gump Touring Edition. This is the top spec of all the Gumps in the Subaru Forester lineup. And that's because there is still no XT model available in this current generation. The question is, has Subaru officially ruined the Forester now because of the void of a performance version in the model lineup? For 2021, all models of the Gump now come with the steering responsive LED headlights that do cross-eyed things when you start the car. Up until this current generation, Subaru used to offer a wide variety of performance models for the Forester. Here in the States, we got the XT trim, which was basically a rebodied Subaru WRX. And in other countries, they actually had up until the last SJ generation, a Forester STI TS edition, which was tuned with a bunch of STI parts, including Brembo brakes from the factory. This current generation, however, comes with two different sets of brakes. For the upper trims, this Touring comes with a set of 12.4 inch front rotors, 11.2 inch rear. They all have single pot calipers in the back and dual piston ones up here in the front. And in front of those is a set of 18 inch wheels wrapped in 225, 55, 18 inch Falcon Zeke's all season tires. That's a fun word to say, Zeke's. Zeke's, you're going off road later. It's like Subaru's taking a play out of the Audi playbook right here with these satin chrome mirror caps. A performance version of a Forester probably seems like an oxymoron to some people, but this is the reason why you would get a performance Forester over a WRX. Because of hatch, hatchback. Super happy to see that this thing has a button right here to lower your seats because the previous gen did not have that. Also, there's a pretty decent Carmen hard-on sound system in this thing as well. Yes, I know what I said. It's a decent amount of luxury features considering the price of this. I love these taillights too. It might seem like I'm being a bit harsh on the Forester, but that's because I have to be because I own one. With that said, the color palette Subaru currently offers for these is flat out nursing home chic. This is the most exciting color they offer, crimson red pearl. Everything else looks like something you'd knit a quilt out of. As far as the interior of this Forester Touring goes, you're all capable of reading brochures. You're here on YouTube for a reason, because you want to watch a car review. So let me demonstrate some things in the interior of this Touring model. Starting with the seats, every car review needs a good bolstering test. Keep in mind, these are leather seats that are heated. No ventilation, so I'm gonna stick to them. Bolstering. That's nice. You get in the back seat of this thing and a gentle breeze blows your hair. The steering wheel in here is great. It's got some paddle shifters on the back side of it, tons of buttons. Mmm, smells like fresh shower curtain and couch. The textures that they use on all the materials in the interior are grippy. They're grippy and it's squishy. It's like a, a rubbery, a rubbery, squishy, durable though, super durable feeling. I just recently reviewed a Bronco Sport and I thought that thing had a durable dash. It did, but this is durable and doesn't look like it was designed by Tupperware. This is a nice interior. I forgot the Foresters have this reminder that E.T. likes to read informational books in your backpack when he's riding behind you. And the headliner is beige. I would at least expect the Touring to have a black headliner. It just looks better. Do they still allow you? Yeah. I love this feature right here. So the center seat belt, you can actually undo, and then this will tuck up into the ceiling so you don't have to stare at it. Smart right there. On to the important stuff. Let's fire this thing up and see how this FB25 Delta sounds. For a 34 grand, this has an obnoxious amount of tech and safety features crammed into it. It literally has too many safety features. I've never had to say that before, but this has too many. There's actually even a screen up here in the center that you can view all of them and whether or not they're turned on or not. And also, if you continue to scroll through there, 
There is some telemetry for off-roading, which is kind of nice. The facial recognition software and this little glowing red light and this little hunter killer looking hood in the center of the dashboard. I feel like this thing was designed with Skynet involved and it's gonna become self-aware and why did the Terminator franchise go to shit? The 576 watt nine speaker Harman Kardon sound system sounds a lot more powerful when you crank it up than you think it would for only having 576 watts. I'm actually kind of impressed with it. Subaru calls their infotainment system Starlink and I'm a big fan of it because it's easy to use but more importantly I just like the look of the interface and the graphics and the colors they use. It's bright and vivid and it just looks good. And there's also a button down here that says Sarah off. Sarah off. I don't want to be off. I want to be turned on. I think you guys already know the drill by now. There's a bunch of off-road obstacles out in the desert around me and uh, I'm gonna see what this thing can and can't do. Keep in mind it's not my vehicle so I'm not gonna do unnecessary risks because it's not my vehicle. I'm gonna try to take this thing around to the back side to the hill that I tested the TRD Pro Tacoma on. I don't think this is going to be able to do it. I didn't test the Bronco Sport on that hill because I didn't think it would do it. But I own a Forester and I have faith in this little thing so I'm going to look like an idiot here in a second because I don't think it's going to do this. As far as drive modes go, the X mode actually has some options that you can choose from. There's dirt and snow over to the left and then deep snow and mud. There's a lot of emphasis on snow, and I think that's what this thing is actually designed to do as far as off-roading goes. I'm going to put it into X mode, snow and dirt, and see what it can do in snow and dirt, because this is dirt. I know a lot of it has to do with the line, and I can't take the line I want to take because I don't have enough ground clearance. Let me try this way. Come on. Really? Robots are getting mad at me. I know this thing would make it up that hill. If I just sent it hard as hell with no regard whatsoever to the front bumper or the undercarriage, I bet you would make it. But the average buyer of a Forester is not going to do something like that. Try normal mode, SI drive sport, trash control off. I know this thing would make it up that if I just took a little bit more aggressive line and beat the sh out of it up the hill. It would do it. It just needs more momentum. Or I could let air out of the tires. But that's not what I do in these car views. I test it as it is out of the box. And I can't beat the sh out of this thing. As much as I, I'm sure it could do it if I did. This thing's based on an Impreza platform. Let's do something that Imprezas are good at. Rally. loads of grip when you send it like this. It's not even spinning the tires. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what you're good at, Forrester. Yeah, that's what you're good at, Forrester. element. No Honda reference intended. 
This is not a rock crawler. It's a, it's a plant nursery and dog park crawler. I don't know where I'm going. I've never gone out this way before. What is this? It's like a forest. There's a mattress in the road. It's weird. What kind of crap is that? No hood strut? You guys used to do one. Hello, and welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Under the hood of this 2021 Subaru Forester is a Foxtrot 25 Delta. It is a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed four cylinder that produces 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 176 pound feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. It just looks weird in my mind without having an intercooler sitting on top of this flat floor getting heat soaked. It just, it needs it. That's what gives these things spice. If you notice the cylinder heads are way down here by the frame rails, all you really have up top is a bunch of plastic, the intake manifold and a cover and the alternator sitting up here and the air intake, all the weights down below. That's why I like these because they're boxer engines. They make cool sounds when you uncork the exhaust system on them and the turbo ones are a lot of fun. There is no turbo model available for this current generation. However, there is hope coming here in the near future with a new boxer engine that may be powering the Forester with forced induction. In the name of science, it is now time to give this thing the beans. As far as drive modes go, you have SI drive located here on the steering wheel. Intelligent and sport. There's no sport sharp on here though. I'm gonna put it into sport mode. Ready? Go. Okay, damn, come on. There we go. Yep, there's that. All right, it's time for the braking test. No one behind me, except for a penguin. Ready? Whoa! <laughs> that thing got festive when I slammed on the brakes. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. It is now time to get this thing up in the air and actually take a look at the drivetrain and suspension. Come, come. Oh, I almost walked into it. I gotta raise it. This is weird. There is a giant plastic hollow box under the back bumper where a second muffler would be. This is empty. There's nothing in here. I bet you bees would make a nest in there. That's what they would do. No fake plastic exhaust tips on this back bumper. Aw, look how tiny this little rear end is. It's not the first time I've heard that one before. This is adorable though. It's cute. It's got little pink bands that hold on the dust boots and the rear axle shafts. I like that. It's not cherry blossom though. You can see the rear calipers have these little modules attached to them that were designed by Cyberdyne Systems. I'll stop with the Terminator jokes, I promise. That they are capable of doing brake-based torque vectoring also. When Subaru tries to low-key flex on everyone by saying that they have symmetrical all-wheel drive, what they're referring to is what you see right here, the orientation of the drive line. If you look up here towards the front, the engine is located in the front and the transmission is directly behind it with the drive shaft coming out the rear. More often than not, what a lot of manufacturers do in modern crossovers today is it has a transversely mounted engine where it's sideways and the transmission is off to one of the sides and then a transfer case sends the power to the rear diff. So it's not a straight flowing design like you have on the Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive. I personally prefer this style. That's why I like Subarus. As far as the transmission goes, this is all you got with the Forester. This is the TR580 constant variable transmission. It is designed in-house by Subaru and utilizes components on the internals such as the chain that are manufactured by LUK, a German transmission company. The Forester shouldn't be a baby SUV. It should be a boxy lifted car. I think the more it 
strays towards trying to be a small SUV, the less Forester it becomes. I, and I get it, because they, they gotta sell cars, they're a small car company, but weird is what drew me to Subaru. That's why I've always had a passion for these things, because the Forester was always this weird little boxy car that you could get with a WRX drivetrain. For those of you that are still watching this car review for some actual automotive journalism of some form of another, I will at least report fuel economy. I was delighted with this thing. It doesn't have a ton of power, but for being an all-wheel drive vehicle that's shaped like a tissue box with the corners rounded off, it got phenomenal fuel economy. Even out here beating on it in the dirt, it still averaged decent fuel economy for the entire tank. So I guess that's a huge plus right there. It's a super safe vehicle. If you want safety features, tons of them. Tech feature wise, tons of them. And uh, yeah, I, I think that it's still got the heart of what Subaru made itself great upon. I just think that they're kind of veering into the utilitarian cookie cutter everybody else appliance type crossover and i want subaru to steer back into the weird direction because that's what made this company great and they need to focus on that not trying to be like everyone else if you guys never seen one of my vehicle reviews before i have multiple categories that rate and assess them starting with the bean score it is an assessment of one to five beans based feeling you get behind your belly button when you give it the beans and the 21 Subaru Forester Touring is getting a rating of 0.7 bean. It's not gonna win any races with this uh, FB25, but that's okay, because hopefully there is a turbo power plant coming in the near future. And even if it doesn't have necessarily more power than this, as long as it's got more usable torque down low, I think it'll improve the driving experience. Next is the meatball test. It is a rating of one to five meatballs based on a vehicle's off-road abilities to tackle rocks that smell like meatballs or something. And this Forester right here is getting a rating of 2.5 wads of meat. Next is the cookie score. It is an assessment of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. And the touring trim of this Forester Gump right here is getting a rating of 4.1 cookie. The touring trim is decent value. There is so many safety features in this and I know a lot of people that buy these Foresters care about that stuff. If that's what you're looking for, you can't go wrong here for the price. And uh, the fuel economy is pretty decent considering it's all wheel drive. Lastly though is the penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And I gotta be tough on this because I own a Forester. This 21 Forester Gump Touring is getting a rating of two point dirt bike. There's some people on dirt bikes. I probably look like an idiot. It's getting 2.6 dirt bikes. Dirt bike penguins. I don't know, it's not bad. It's just, I really think these deserve a performance model. So I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.